So in this video, we are going to do the classic animated uh, bouncing ball assignment. Um, it's an exercise and introduction into the graph editors of Autodesk Line. Um, so I've already gone th through and created out a scene here in, our, in Maya. Um, I created out a ground plane, gave it a material, um, added a material to the sphere here that we're going to be using for our bouncing ball, put a, uh, a checker texture on it, and created a light and had some shadows. Um, if you don't know how to do these things, please refer back to some of the earlier videos that I've done that go over how to do um, some basic creation of objects as well as adding materials and textures to things. Um, so there's a lot of different ways you can handle this. Um, some people like to um, animate the object directly, um, and that's one way of doing it. Some people like to break it down and put it in groups to have control, more control over the object. And um, it's probably going to be overkill for this exercise, but some people can even go in and do rigs, which is a, a more advanced version of animation where you can actually bind uh, verte vertices to bones and things like that. Uh, there will be some problems. I won't be able to do a couple things um, um, if I do just straight animation of the ball here, at least not without a fair degree of complexity, which I don't want to introduce in this video series. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and just animate the ball, and then I'll talk about the problems um, that, that arise from that as we go. So to create animation on a thing, it's the same um, 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 same systems um, that you do from previous animation uh, lectures that we did. We can always animate um, by selecting the object um, and moving the timeline somewhere and then using the S key is one way to, to keyframe things. Um, alternatively what you can do is you can do shift and the corresponding tool for example, if I animate mostly translate in this case, I can do Shift W for translate keyframes. Um, I can do Shift E for rotate keyframes, as you can see. And I can do Shift R for just scale keyframes. And the last method is we can literally just right click on the channels that we want to uh, change here, and we just do key selected. Now, there's no real right or wrong answer here. Um, I tend to try to make as few keys as I uh, keys as I go, um, um, and there's nothing uh, wrong if you do uh, S key and create keyframes for everything, but please know you're probably going to have to go back and clean up the animation at some point um, to, to make things a little more um, bearable. Um, so keyframes can be done, again, with any one of those methods, S key, shift in the corresponding tool, and right-clicking on the property and adding keys. As, as always, you always want to follow the three steps when animating. Adjust the object, um, sorry, adjust the timeline first. In this case, it's frame one. Adjust the object in some way, W, E, or R, in this case. For example, maybe I'll pull it way up here. I'll go all the way up to, say, 24. And then you set a key. And then again, I'm going to tra do translate Y in this case. I'm just going to right click, key selected. So, if you don't do that, what will happen is you'll have the object snap back. So let's, for example, let's say if I do this out of order, I'm gonna have the ball come back down. I'm gonna, oh, I'm gonna animate over here. Oh, I forgot to move the timeline. You can see it's gonna snap back up. Um, so it's 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 kind of a good idea to animate everything um, in, um, like I said, follow those steps. Um, you know, animating uh, by moving the timeline first, alter the object, and then set a key. Now, with all animation, especially if, if you're a beginner or if you're, you know, or if you're trying something new, I recommend animating in passes. Animating in passes just means try not to do everything at once. Just try to think of it in the biggest possible animation or the most most influential animation steps first. Do those and then come back and do other ones around it. Um, some people call this blocking in the animation. Um, you know, basically we want to, we want to try not try to try to do the biggest movements first before we bother to do the smaller movements. Because if the bigger movements have to change in timing, then we have to move all the smaller ones as well, and that's just not efficient. So start with the big big block values in, get those block values in first, then, uh, then go add the small frames on it, and you won't have to worry about moving all those small frames when you have to make edits as well. Um, so it just saves you time. All right, so blocking in this animation would mean, um, in this case, um, I'm just going to do the bouncing up and down. So I'm going to do a ball bounce, and then maybe later I'll come in and I'll do it. I'm going to do a squash and stretch, and then maybe I'll move it on, on, you know, have it bounce around or something 
as we get further along. But the most important part of this, or at least the hardest part of this, in my opinion, is going to be getting the ball bouncing, getting that timing. It's the biggest movement on screen because I don't know when it's going to squash and stretch because I don't know when the ball is going to hit the ground. So let's get that first. So blocking in the animation is, 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 is one of the easier ones. But again, try not to do too many steps at once. Just do everything, get your timing right, then move on. So to block this in, I'm going to start this off maybe a little bit higher. And I just key from 24 Y. It doesn't have to be the same as mine. But I'm going to have this ball come from the top and bounce and hit the ground. So I'm going to, again, just do this in half-second increments um, because I want to... Um, keep it simple. It's not actually accurate, but I will keep it simple, and then I'll worry about the timing in another pass. So right now I'm just going to block them in. Now again on um, frame rates and timing. If I'm going to say this is a half second, you, that's dependent on what your current frame rate is. So my frame rate is 24 frames per second. Um, you can change this if you like by clicking here and scrolling down through this list. There's lots of options now. I can do 30 frames per second, 24. 24 is the default in Maya. Uh, 24 is more um, more used in film, where 30 is more used in television and video games. Um, I honestly don't know the reason for that, okay, but I just that's what it currently is. Um, so, um, if I wanted to go half a second, I would go to frame 12. I'm going to drag this all the way down to where it meets the ground. In my case, it's going to be about three here, and I'm going to key this again. So right-click, key selected, and now we have animation. You can see it keys that, like that. Now, after that, we want to go back up. Now I started my thing at frame 24, um, or why translate y24. When it comes back up for another bounce, I'm going to go another half second again, because not because it's accurate, just because it's easy. Um, I'll, I'll worry about the timing later. Um, 24, and I'm going to move it back up. But I'm not going to move it back up as far. Um, typically, in these kinds of animations, a good good rule of, rule here is to um, have it be about, about half or maybe even a little bit over half of the value that it came from. So, again, you can just eyeball this say halfway. But mine's probably going to be around, like I don't know, 13, 14 mark. Um, I'm, I'm only keeping these numbers even to make it easier on the math um, of explaining what values I'm doing this as lecturing. But you can totally just WYSIWYG drag this around and see what you, you know, whatever you get. So I'm going to key that. And then um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, move this a little bit further, go to frame 36, and I'm going to bring it back to the ground. Now the ground is always the same. It always hits the ground at the same spot. So what I'm going to do for the ground is I'm going to um, have this uh, um, hit the ground, and I'm gonna, instead of having it hit the ground, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, I could go back to frame three and copy, and you know, or sorry, and just write, you know, do the same value since my values are very, um, very structured. But I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this frame first, in case just on the assumption maybe it's not for you guys accurate, not that accurate. So I'm gonna copy this keyframe. Now all I do is go to that frame, in this case 12, that's where it hits the ground, right click, copy, and I'm going to go back to frame 36, and right click, paste, paste. And there you go. You can see, ball goes up, ball goes down, ball goes up, ball goes down. Now again, the uh, this range slider determines what you can see here. If you need more time, you can most likely just grab these boxes and stretch it. If this thing's all the way filled up, which I doubt, um, you can just add more time by typing the numbers in there. Um, we probably won't need that much time, so I'm just going to leave this right here for now. I'll probably be taking time off of it once I get further along. So, okay, so frame 12, 24, it's back in the air, 36 hits the ground, uh, 48, it's going to bounce back up. Uh, last value I did, last bounce was 14, so I don't know, maybe I'll just do like 8 in my case, about halfway. Bounce back up. Key selected. Then once again, I'm going to hit the ground again. So I'm just going to do again, I'm just keeping it in values of 12. Right click, paste, paste, because I already have my keyframes saved in memory from the copy. So back to three. And then I went out, I'll do one more set of bounces. Go up, we'll do four. 
key selected and then 84 back to the ground right click paste paste and then you can see if we rewind this rewind and play it looks something like this very hovery right now but we will definitely get in there and fix this uh, up in the, using the graph editor um, but if you look at this you can see it's kind of hovering the time is consistent it's by no means done but we've blocked in a bouncing ball um, by just you know setting the keyframes here and again I can't under, I can't underestimate this you know overstate this enough it's a really important to um, do things in passes don't try to do everything at once do it in passes clean up the pass move to the next pass you know then do that pass clean up the pass move to the next pass so working passes it'll definitely save your time in the long run all right so hopefully you enjoyed that in the next video we'll start talking about the the graph editor and how to manipulate this ball to actually bounce with more of a impact instead of being this hovering sphere in space so until then uh, ne next see you next time keep animating